This path is a wonderful way of getting your head together and really understanding what life is all about and how you can use your own mind to take charge of your life. When I started all this over 20 years ago, I had no idea that I would be able to bring hope and help to the number of people that I do today. Chapter 3 The Power of Your Spoken Word Every day, declare for yourself what you want in life. Declare it as though you have it. The Law of Mind There is a law of gravity, and there are several other physical laws, like physics and electricity, most of which I don't understand. There are also spiritual laws, like the law of cause and effect. What you give out comes back. There is also a law of mind. I don't know how it works, in much the same way that I don't know how electricity works. I only know that when I flick the switch, the light comes on. I believe that when we think a thought, or when we speak a word or a sentence, it somehow goes out from us into a law of mind and comes back to us as experience. We are now beginning to learn the correlation between the mental and the physical. We are beginning to understand how the mind works and that our thoughts are creative. Our thoughts speed through our minds very quickly, so it is difficult to shape them at first. Our mouths, on the other hand, are slower. So if we can start editing our speech by listening to what we say and not letting negative things come out of our mouths, then we can begin to shape and control our thoughts. There is tremendous power in our spoken words, and many of us are not aware just how important they are. Let us consider words as the foundation of what we continually create in our lives. We use words all the time, yet we babble away, seldom thinking about what we are truly saying or how we are saying it. We pay very little attention to the selection of our words. In fact, most of us speak in negatives. As children, we were taught grammar. We were taught to select words according to these rules of grammar. However, I have always found that the rules of grammar continually change, and what was improper at one time is proper at another time, or vice versa. What was slang in the past is considered common usage in the present. However, grammar does not take into consideration the meaning of words and how they affect our lives. On the other hand, I was not taught in school that my choice of words would have anything to do with what I would experience in life. No one taught me that my thoughts were creative or that they could literally shape my life. Nobody taught me that what I gave out in the form of words would return to me as experiences. The purpose of the Golden Rule was to show us a very basic law of life, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, or what you give out comes back to you. It was never meant to cause guilt. No one ever taught me that I was worth loving or that I deserved good, and nobody taught me that life was here to support me. I remember that as children, we would often call each other cruel and hurtful names and try to belittle one another. But why did we do that? Where did we learn such behavior? Look at what we were taught. Many of us were told repeatedly by our parents or teachers that we were stupid or dumb or lazy. We were a nuisance and not good enough. Sometimes we heard our parents say that they wished we had never been born. Maybe we cringed when we heard these words, but little did we realize how deeply embedded the hurt and pain would become. Changing our self-talk. Too often we accepted the early messages that our parents gave us. We heard, eat your spinach, clean your room, or make your bed, in order to be loved. You got the idea that you were only acceptable if you did certain things, that acceptance and love were conditional. However, that was according to somebody's idea of what was worthwhile 
and had nothing to do with your deep inner self-worth. You got the idea that you could only exist if you did these things to please others. Otherwise, you did not have permission to even exist. These early messages contribute to what I call our self-talk, the way we talk to ourselves. The way we talk to ourselves inwardly is really important because it becomes the basis of our spoken words. It sets up the mental atmosphere in which we operate and which attracts to us our experiences. If we belittle ourselves, life is going to mean very little to us. If we love and appreciate ourselves, then life can be a wonderful, joyous gift. If our lives are unhappy, or if we are feeling unfulfilled, it's very easy to blame our parents or them and say it's all their fault. However, if we do, we stay stuck in our conditions, our problems, and our frustrations. Words of blame will not bring us freedom. Remember, there is a power in our words. Again, our power comes from taking responsibility for our lives. I know it sounds scary to be responsible for our lives, but we really are, whether we accept it or not. If we want to be responsible for our lives, we've got to be responsible for our mouths. The words and phrases we say are only extensions of our thoughts. Start to listen to what you say. If you hear yourself using negative or limiting words, change them. If I hear a negative story, I don't go around repeating it to everyone. I think it has gone far enough and I let it go. If I hear a positive story, however, I will tell everyone. When you are out with other people, begin to listen to what they say and how they say it. See if you can connect what they say with what they are experiencing in life. Many, many people live their lives in shoulds. Should is a word that my ear is very attuned to. It is as if a bell goes off every time I hear it. Often I will hear people use a dozen shoulds in a paragraph. These same people wonder why their lives are so rigid or why they can't move out of a situation. They want a lot of control over things that they cannot control. They are either making themselves wrong or making someone else wrong. And then they question why they aren't living lives of freedom. We can also remove the expression have to from our vocabulary and our thinking as well. When we do, we will release a lot of self-imposed pressure on ourselves. We create tremendous pressure by saying, I have to go to work, I have to do this, I have to, I have to. Instead, let's begin to say choose to. I choose to go to work because it pays the rent right now or whatever. Come from choice. Choose to puts a whole different perspective on our lives. Everything we do is by choice, even though it may not seem to be so. A lot of us also use the word but. We make statements, then we say but, which heads us in two different directions. We give conflicting messages to ourselves. Listen to how you use the word but the next time you speak. Another expression we could be mindful of is don't forget. We are so used to saying don't forget this or that, and what happens? We forget. We really want to remember, and instead we forget. So we can begin to use the phrase please remember in place of don't forget, or I will always remember instead of I will never forget. When you wake up in the morning, do you curse the fact that you have to go to work? Do you complain about the weather? Do you grumble that your back or your head hurts? What is the second and third thing you think or say? Do you yell at the children to get up? Most people say more or less the same thing every morning. How does what you say start your day? Is it positive and cheerful and wonderful? Or is it whining and condemning? If you grumble and complain and moan, you're setting yourself up for just such a day. 
What are your last thoughts before going to bed? Are they powerful healing thoughts or poverty worry thoughts? When I speak of poverty thoughts, I don't mean only about the lack of money. It can be a negative way of thinking about anything in your life, any part of your life that is not flowing freely. Do you worry about tomorrow? Usually, I will read something positive before I go to sleep. I am aware that when I sleep, I am doing a lot of clearing that will prepare me for the next day. I find it very helpful to turn over to my dreams any problems or questions I may have. I know my dreams will help me take care of whatever is going on in my life. I am the only person who can think in my mind, just like you are the only person who can think in your mind. Nobody can force us to think in a different way. We choose our thoughts, and these are the basis for our self-talk. As I experienced how this process worked more in my life, I began to live more of what I was teaching others. I really watched my words and my thoughts, and I constantly forgave myself for not being perfect. I allowed myself to be me, rather than struggling to be a super person who may only be acceptable in others' eyes. When I began for the first time to trust life and to see it as a friendly place, I lightened up. My humor became less biting and more truly funny. I worked on releasing criticism and judgment of myself and other people, and I stopped telling disaster stories. We are so quick to spread bad news. It's just amazing. I stopped reading the newspaper and gave up the 11 o'clock news at night because all the reports were concerned with disaster and violence and very little good news. I realized that most people don't want to hear good news. They love to hear bad news so that they have something to complain about. Too many of us keep recycling the negative stories until we believe that there is only bad in the world. For a while there was a radio station that broadcast only good news, but it went out of business. When I had my cancer, I decided to stop gossiping, and to my surprise I found I had nothing to say to anyone. I became aware that whenever I met a friend, I would immediately dish the latest dirt with them. Eventually I discovered there were other ways of talking, although it wasn't an easy habit to break. Nonetheless, if I gossiped about other people, then other people probably gossiped about me, because what we give out, we get back. As I worked more and more with people, I really began to listen to what they said. I really began to hear the words, not just get the general drift. Usually after 10 minutes with a new client, I could tell exactly why they had a problem, because I could hear the words they were using. I could understand them by the way they were talking. I knew that their words were contributing to their problems. If they were talking negatively, imagine what their self-talk was like. It must be more of the same negative programming. Poverty thinking, as I called it. Poverty thinking, as I called it. Poverty thinking, as I called it.